Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Sinead, and I am here with Christina, also known as the Naked Mama on Instagram. Christina, tell us who you are and what you do. Okay, so my name is Christina, the Naked Mama. I am a mom blogger. I'm also a high school teacher, and I'm kind of just here on social media to answer all your mom needs and questions and just share my really raw and real journey through motherhood. That's exciting. Christina, I have a lot of moms um, that are friends, family members, clients, um, or who just come on my page to browse. I'm not a mom yet, but I have a lot of questions for you. Number sure. one question that I have is um, a lot of people buy condos. And what happens is they say, I'm going to use the den as a play place. And then the den doesn't get turned into a play place. It gets turned into closet, pantry, work area, slash yeah. shoe rack. <laughs> so what do we do? Like how, how is it accessible for for parents to make, uh, you know, make a nice play area for their children when I hear children take over everything. Yeah, they take over your entire house, whether we like it or not. But um, this is a great topic because I live in an end unit townhome mm -hmm. and it's not actually um, that big of a living space. The room that I'm in right now is our den slash office. Okay. And it's, um, it was a room that we had said before we had my son, it's going to be our office. Mm -hmm. And we spent years trying to make it our office, but it became that like a junk room things that you hide when company comes over. Junk um, room. Yeah. yeah. And it was just a really non-functioning. Yeah. So I, I debated when I had my son, if I should make this a toy room or not. And I was like, well, I like having his toys where I am. But then that became, your entire house was taken over with toys. Yeah. So we decided recently to move it to the front room and it's the best thing that I've ever done. And I've um, kind of set it up so that it's functional and I can have my personal stuff in here, like some office type stuff in here also. Mm -hmm. um, and I can take you around and show you that. Can you? I really want to see what it looks like because I've seen some really neat neat like um duo workplace slash functional areas so yeah so remember this was um a mess okay approximately so, how much square foot i know you probably don't have your measuring tape out but <laughs> it's like maybe 10 by 10 very okay. small okay very small. so if you can look here this is the entrance from when you come in to the door yeah and i'll just kind of show you here this is my front entrance so it's like right at the front of the house. So it's perfect for an office. So we have um, over here, I've created, this is I an- I love Ikea. that, that's, yeah. that's a cool idea. So this is an Ikea bookshelf, very inexpensive. Yeah. And I have all of his books organized. These things are amazing because I store his like, um, his crayons, his markers, his coloring books in here. And then these two are ours. So this is where I might keep like recent bills that need to get filed, um, anything related to that. And then we all have like headphones, chargers, like random stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is kind of where we keep all of that stuff. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. yeah. So you would never know. He doesn't really even pull these out. Mm -hmm. And then up here, I like to include you know, some pictures of him since it's kind of his room. And weekly I go through and organize all of the stuff. It never always looks like this because he's going to come in and destroy it. But um, one thing is that if these books are like this and the toys are laid out, they will come in and play with them. And uh, it's like kind of new. If they're I all didn't over. Know that. I didn't, That's something yeah. I learned in my last video. Um, yeah. yeah. And I didn't know that was a real thing. Yeah, so like uh, if they're just thrown all over and it's a mess, he won't even look at them. But when they're like this, he comes in and it's like a fresh start. And sometimes like I'll have these characters somewhere else and it just can, kind of gives a new perspective. Yeah. Um, so I'll do you, you think limiting the amount of books you put out is a smart idea? Yeah. So these, um, I keep stuff when we get them for birthdays, like in the closet still, because yeah. you don't need to bring yeah. all the toys. But these are all the books that we've opened. There's some still upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then they get ruined too. So you don't want to take everything out at once. Um, up here is another one of mine. So behind his picture, this is like a, like a little box from like HomeSense that we keep like envelopes, stamps, all that type of stuff. And then this basket up here is where we keep like our sunglasses and anything that we might quickly need to get out the door. So you would never know that from looking at the space, but it's kind of hidden all well there. So um, those little bins, like those really cute little bins, I hear that you can get those in the dollar store as well. Dollar store, I have dollar store ones in the kitchen for all of his snacks. Okay. And these ones were just a home sense purchase. Right. And then the bottom ones were Ikea. Okay, got it. So if we, oh, so I have to talk about the artwork. I have way more artwork upstairs. But I post some of his artwork and some crafts just because it is proven that if kids see their work up, it helps with their um, self-esteem and confidence. Oh. It was like positive reinforcement. So I try to add, I have to add a lot more, but little pieces of him. And then today yeah. we did a craft for Mother's Day. We made um, grandma and uh, Nona necklaces <laughs> out of pasta. <laughs> so I have them hanging here because it's like my to-do list that we have to finish them. Yeah. So this is my oh, reminder you board. Pasta necklaces. Yeah. Uh, and that killed some time today. Um, How much time did it kill? An hour. So that's Oh, good. wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if this, you guys are looking to do something with your kids, give them a pack of pasta. pasta. This is um, a board from Michael's. So I still wanted to keep it like somewhat fashionable because uh, this is for us. So all of our appointments, doctor's appointments, anything that's like if it's like a, an urgent need and then I also tie in like some pictures kind of to make it cute mm -hmm. but this is just a typical to-do list board yeah because I spend a lot of time in here with them so okay. if it's okay. there and I don't like this type of clutter in the kitchen because yeah. our space is already small so it's here and I see it every day when I come in that's so, really interesting so yeah okay I have parents say to me man it this kid just um pulls everything out, throws it on the floor, and they don't pack it back neatly. And there's a lot of parents who are like very particular with putting everything back in its right place. 100%. What advice do you give them? Um, okay, you have to be flexible. You, uh, <laughs> my advice is that I've learned this because I'm very like OCD with that type of stuff too. Kids are going to experiment. So let them have fun. Let them play. I, I have to now. My son's two and a half. I have to keep things that I don't want him touching like out of his sight because they're naturally going to want to try it and they're at a mimicking stage. So if they see uh, like Papa playing with a screwdriver, they're going to want to do it. And that's great for their creativity. So um, if they're supervised, sure, let them help. But if I had something here and I, and he was trying to reach it, it's going to end up being a meltdown. Mm -hmm. So try your best. Um, like I said, this playroom this morning was a complete like mess because he was playing. I try to clean up at nighttime so the next day is a fresh day. Yeah. And you want to kind of just, anything you don't want them touching, if you're going to be that particular, keep away from them, out of sight, out of mind. I kind of, I really like that you don't have a TV in there. No TV. No. I really, so, really like that. I like that a lot because it's so easy to say, here's the iPad. Yeah. Or here's the, or just to go watch TV. So it's really nice that you don't have that. It's more activity. Yeah, no, this is just, um, this is, it's kind of like a peaceful room for me because when we come in here, he plays, I sit, I have my coffee, I play with them. Yeah. And it's kind of like a very warm and welcoming room. And I didn't expect that when I created this. What are some of the things that you have been doing um, to keep busy with your two year old? And what advice do you have for parents right now who are stuck at home with a two to four year old? Um, what are some activities you can suggest that they do? So we've been doing a lot of painting, a lot of crafts. Um, I limit screen time, like you brought up the TV. Uh, it's been a lot of like hands-on. So like we did painting Easter eggs. We have a sand pit in the backyard. Yeah, so we try to get That's really cool. Yeah. yeah I, we go on walks every day. Nice. Um, and like going back to they want to help now that they're home they're getting bored too so when i bake i let him help me bake and it's a huge could be a huge pain uh at the moment 
but um, it's, it's, it's good learning for them to help you and mimicking yeah. what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. What is, um, what is the greatest lesson you've learned as a parent? The greatest lesson is that you really have to roll with the punches and that um, when you think that like you've just got it, it changes. So the second that you're like, oh, he's sleeping through the night or oh, he's this, like something else happens. It's like you always just have to be prepared and be able to go with the flow. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Yeah. What do you, if you had to name one thing that you, if you don't mind sharing, what's the one um, toughest thing as a parent? The toughest thing as a parent is that it's not about you anymore. It's about uh, your baby. So you have to um, be very selfless. Mm -hmm. And I like when you brought that up about like parents being very particular about things or like really the, your world is now about them. So you got to really try, like, kind of let a lot of things go. Yeah. yeah. So what happens to a parent who is super um, modern and chic, doesn't want to get their blazer dirty, doesn't want their furniture scuffed, um, you know, putting up gates everywhere? How do you make that into a child-friendly home? Is your home pretty child-friendly? So we are um, that type of parent, too. <laughs> that everyone used to joke around being like, you're going to be that parent, like walk in the streets of Yorkville all the time. And um, I still like nice things. Like, you know, I have a very like high end love for purses and shoes. Um, my house, as, as we all do. <laughs> yeah. My house is all white furniture. Yeah. You like my white furniture, white kitchen chairs. Table? Yes. White kitchen chairs. Uh, oh, very light. So, you know, when I bought the furniture, everyone said, you, you don't do this if you're planning on having kids. But I said, well, this is what I want at the time. Now, although I say like, you have to be very um, flexible and relaxed, I am very strict in my parenting. So he is not allowed to go around and color on things and touch stuff. So I've trained him that way from the beginning. So it's quite doable. Um, again, he just colored on the back of a chair yesterday because he was having a tantrum. You have to address it. The chair can be cleaned. Okay, it's not the end of the world. It's a material thing. Um, and just look for the lesson that came out of that moment. But my furniture has gotten very dirty, but it can be clean. And that's yeah. how you have to look at things. Okay, so this is a big question. And I'm going to try to articulate it in the best way I can. But um, so we as, we as adults have partners who are also adults who are having a tough time being at home all day. So you can only imagine how a child feels yeah. who's four years old who likes to run and let all of that energy out. So they start acting up. They start going to sleep a little bit late. They get very frustrated. Um, not only your professional advice as a teacher, but as a mom as well, what is your suggestion for um, extreme boredom on the part of the child? Because there's only so much arts and crafts they can do or running, uh, running outside. So what would you suggest to continue to have their mind working in the best way? So like, I'm a big believer in routine. Um, so no matter like if it's summertime and the sun's still out, like my son has to go to bed between seven and eight. Oh. So yeah, like he's like, you have to have routine. So it, no matter what the age, even if the child's older and they're in high school, like routine is really important. Absolutely. Once their routine gets thrown off, mm -hmm. everything will get thrown off. Mm -hmm. So for the boredom aspect, I can sense my son getting bored sometimes. Mm -hmm. I try to switch it up. So instead of going for like a wagon walk, I'll let him walk and pull the wagon. Mm -hmm. I'll try to maybe go to a different location. Maybe we'll go for a car ride. I try to um, incorporate different activities and yeah, there's only so much you can do right now, mm -hmm. but um, sports, like we have the basketball net outside. Sometimes I remove the basketball net. So like today he can't see it. And so when I reintroduce it tomorrow, it's something new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, like he's been helping me around the house, like with laundry, with vacuuming, stuff like that. It's new. It's fun. But again, they're all going crazy. <laughs> Everyone is going, every single parent right now, I think in the world is going crazy. Yeah, very hard. And, and you know what? And I don't like, like, I don't love TV time, 
But if you need to do that half an hour or an hour a day to kind of give them a little bit of a break, it's fine. What about single moms? Now, I know that you have a partner, but um, what about moms out there who are single and who are, what advice do you have for them? Because I know that you have a really big following of women who are specifically mothers. um, And some of them are single and a lot of them are struggling right now because they're with their child Mm 24 seven. And yes, for all intents and purposes, that is the reality of their life and they're not really getting help from their spouse. Um, Do you have any words of encouragement for them? and um, any piece of advice that can probably uplift them or help them in any way? I would say during a regular non-COVID time, um, always ask for help. Um, Even having a a partner, my mom and my mother-in-law play like a huge role in helping me. Mm -hmm. Um, Now with the circumstances, maybe look to someone like online, like a blogger or an influencer or a mom where you can have that relationship with and um, ask for help if you need. It's really important to build community and feel support. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of new like moms that are just having their babies now. Mm -hmm. And I can't even imagine um, being so isolated and not even having visitors because that was a really hard time for me. So having a virtual presence um, might be something that they could do to help them and have someone they could ask questions to. I like that what that point you made, building a community around you, because I find a lot of women don't want to ask for help. They're ashamed yeah. or um, I've heard women say, um, you know, it's just so tough. People can give advice, but you just never know until you're in this situation. It's so tough. And so when they hear people who are single or they hear people who are like happily married or have supportive partners, it's tough for them to hear this advice. But that's key. If they ask for help, they can get the help. Yeah. And like when you open up about something, so for example, I opened up about having postpartum depression on my Instagram blog. And at the time I felt like I'm the only one. And then so many people come forward and say, thank you for sharing because I want to share the same thing with you. So if, if people are struggling, if you're a single mom and you're struggling, when you open up, you'll see the outpouring of like other people who are in their same situation. Okay, so for those who have experienced postpartum, who have just given birth, um, does postpartum exist before giving birth? So postpartum is like after you have the baby, you're going through this change. Um, there's problem, like they're not, not problems. There's issues that can happen before, but postpartum is like post delivery, your hormones are all over the place and you develop this. I was like, a, I was almost detached and I felt very angry at um, my situation, how like I missed my old life. And that went on for like a year and I went to therapy and I didn't take medication, but I was seen by a doctor. Yeah, I was, I was very, um, it was very bad. And then you feel, I felt um, like not a good mom. And like, why am I feeling like this? And why are my friends not like this? But then the more and more you talk, everyone had like a little bit of it. Right. So yeah, it, that was a very uh, interesting, difficult time, but it brought me to here and I've grown so much from that. What's helped you the most recover outside of therapy? Was there anything else that you've done that had helped you recover from postpartum? Um, honestly. Um, talking with other women like building that community and have hearing someone say I feel the same way because I would look at my neighbor for example I'd be breastfeeding my son in his bedroom looking outside and being like I want to be her I want to be going to the store and I want to be doing that and you feel like you're alone so to hear other people say oh my gosh I feel the same way that helped and it sounds so such like a little thing but that really helped wow that's really thanks for sharing that yeah oh no problem yeah because a lot of women are experiencing these type of pains and are not saying it. So it's good to. Yeah. And that was the first message that I actually um, was started talking about on my blog was the postpartum and mental health behind having a child. And then it's kind of led me down now to where I am. So a lot of, um, so I mean, obviously I'm color and Brown, um, a Trinidadian, but in our culture, um, and I know you, you're Italian, right? Yeah. So in our culture, we believe that, you know, that's a be all end all get married and have a child. So a lot of women have that pressure of forcing themselves into that, uh, that mold to do that. 
and they end up falling into postpartum and they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So what suggestions do you have? I know a lot of, like I said, a lot of moms reach out to you privately because they feel like they can share with this community, their own community. So what advice do you have about um, the cultural difference and, and how they can adapt to what they're going through? I would say like, you really have to be true to yourself and like, this is my advice for like anyone, not just um, a mom dealing with this. Don't worry about so much what other people are thinking. Mm -hmm. And um, if there's someone that is causing you to feel that way or that's like kind of toxic in your life, my true belief is friend, family, like you have to get rid of that because that's only going to stop you from growing and being happy. So I guess a lot of women who probably are minorities as well, or any woman in general, have that shame. Like, I don't want to say that I went, you know, I don't want to say this kid's annoying me, or I don't want to say that I'm frustrated. I don't want to say that I'm losing it because I don't want to look like I'm unraveling. I don't want to look like I'm not a good parent. And obviously perception is key, right? So that I think is a challenge. I hear a lot of people pulling out their hair privately, but they won't say it. And that is where, um, like I'm different in that sense. So if you follow my like Instagram page, for example, you'll see me like, um, going crazy or like my house is a disaster. And half the time my hair is in a messy bun or I haven't showered for a week. I'm trying to show the wash my hair. I do shower. Um, I trying to show the real, the real journey behind it because, um, social media shows like a lot of just like the glam and the perfectness. And that's not reality. So if you fall into that belief, as long as you're uh, providing for your child, feeding them, giving them like the essentials, you're doing your job. So we are, we at the bare minimum, you're doing your yeah. Job. We're made to feel that like we have to make our own baby food, for example. Mm-hmm. Well, no, you don't. You can buy the baby food, or like there's organic baby food. They're like it's all there, right? But you're made to feel like from society that you have to puree it at home and be in your apron and um, just like do all these crazy things that it's not realistic and you will collapse, you will burn out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. If so, you're trying to keep up with this idea or this concept, but a lot of people create this concept in their mind that they don't even know that they're following this prototype. They think it's natural. Yeah. And that will, um, that will cause you to have postpartum if you try to act like that. And I did try to act like that at the beginning when I was a new mom. I tried to be like the picture perfect mom when everyone was coming to visit. I wanted my house clean. I wanted everything perfect. And that caused so much more anxiety. So yeah, of course it would. Yeah. Because you want everything perfect, but. Yeah. So you just gotta, like I said before, let it go, be very flexible and just roll with it. So you're an expert at young minds. You're um, a high school teacher, but you're also a two-year-old mom. So what have you found that has encouraged learning for children? What has not only encouraged their learning, but encouraged positive behaviors as well? What are some things that you have done or you've seen that has encouraged the child to feel really good about themselves? And it doesn't need to be elaborate. It could just be basic things that you've noticed. So I am um, a huge believer in positive reinforcement. I noticed that. So um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it might sound like it's like just so simple, mm-hmm. but if I tell my students, I teach dance, um, by the way, at, at, at the high school. Yeah. So I might tell a student, like, you know, I've really seen like your, your leap improving. Like you're doing such an amazing job. The, the look on their face and then how much harder they would work the rest of the class, it, it just makes a huge difference. Saying it, like having something on paper versus saying it. And with my son, I'm always telling him like excellent work or very good listening, right? And then how I have his artwork up. Um, it's all about positivity. We just finished potty training. Okay. How was that experience? It, it was, that's a whole other, woof. Um, but that's all about like uh, positive reinforcement. And yeah, that like for me, that's um, in high school, a lot of the students learn at different levels. 
But the second you start saying positive things to them, even if it's like something so simple, it's like the, their brain switches and they can, they can function better. It's funny that you say you're, you're in dance um, and you're so creative. And I just, I don't know if you know um, much about chakras or um, energies. Yes, yes. But the sacral chakra is your creative portal. And so they say the greatest way to balance your sacral chakra is through dance. Oh, that's so it's funny. Through, yeah, so it's funny because it's literally such a chain reaction um, to how you function because you do a lot of creative work with your child. So your sacral chakra is clearly balanced. <laughs> I, I, I hope so. <laughs> as, a, as a quick side note. So, um, yeah, thank you for that positive, uh, no that positive reinforcement message because I think it's so easy to say, to tell someone they're not good enough. But it's, it's so much more harder to just look at your child and say, thank you. Yeah, like there's a thousand things I could tell my son in a day about what he's not doing like, yeah. right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't need to do that because they're learning, uh, but it's just those few. And you're learning with them, right? Because this is your first child? Yeah, my first child, yeah. Woo! So do yeah. we have any more coming up in the oven? No. So actually, this is an also a great topic for conversation in future. We, I think, have decided that we're like the one and done. Wow. Yeah. So that's another, again, another whole top. Yeah. So I think that's the route we're going, but never say never, but there's no plans in the future. It's a lot. It's a big responsibility to take care of an entire life. Yeah. And we just kind of decided that we maybe want to have one and spoil him a little bit more and travel more. And oh, but we'll okay. see. We'll see what happens. Does he ask, um, like, can I have a sister? Can no, I have a not yet. And I think that he would just what's love your, it. What's your baby's name, Christina? Anthony Jr. Anthony Jr. Yeah. Oh, AJ. So we call him Anthony Jr. because there's another AJ in our group of friends. So he's, he's Jr. and then the other is AJ. So we call him Jr. for short. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. So anything else you want to touch, uh, touch base with me on in terms of playroom and play space and what you think would maximize, not only maximize space, but make it positive and enjoyable? Yeah, I do want to show you one more thing because we started talking and then I never got to show you. Um, right here, so you saw behind me the shelf. Right here is another storage. So it's on the other wall and it's, um, when you open it, it's like a little storage box. This is also Ikea. So for condos, for call small spaces, it's very like modern looking and chic. Yeah. You can store stuff on top. And then this is like stuff that we might not use all the time, mm -hmm. but it's there. And again, it matches. And, Ikea, then, and Ikea is still delivering too. So for those who think Ikea yeah. is not delivering, Ikea is definitely there. delivering. It's going to take probably six months, but. <laughs> I think it's, it's four weeks right now because my friend just went to order this. Um, over here. So I was telling you how we have like a secret office stuff in here. There's our, <laughs> yeah. our printer. So the printer is wireless. Wow. So you um, it's hooked up to the Wi-Fi. So again, you wouldn't really know. He doesn't touch it, but that's where our printer is. Because we honestly don't have any more space. So <laughs> we kind of use this room as like, and it works. So yeah, there's it works. It looks beautiful. Stuff. Yeah. And that's, that's really it. You got the grand tour. So something really cool that I saw. I was doing a showing. Actually, two really cool things. So... First thing is I was showing a house in Markham a couple months ago and I saw a slide going from, so it was like the walk down to the basement and there was the, um, the, the washroom and the pet, like, you know, when you're going down to the basement, there's like a pantry, kind of, yep. um, washroom. Uh, anyway, so literally there was a slide going down, not the stairs, but attached to the wall going down into the basement. Oh my gosh. I thought it was like the coolest thing. I That's said, like oh. future goals. <laughs> but, yeah, I was, I took a picture and I saved it. I'm like, okay, it's going to yeah. go into my next house. Yeah. Um, so so we keep really saying we're going to move, we're going to move, but we'll see when that happens. But I mean, how, I guess it was probably for that child and how long can that slide really last? But it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds fun. There's so many cool creative uh, play places for kids. 
But I really like how you really showcased um, the art on the wall because that's so important. Yeah. I told a couple people about it um, after I heard it, and some people who watched my video told me that's what they did in their kids' work. Yeah, because work. he has so many um, like little artworks that he's done at daycare and stuff upstairs in our like the the container I keep it in. But it's just there, like collecting dust. So I'm actually going to go up when we get off this call here and get some more out and put some fresh ones up because this just reminded me to do that. And he feels proud when he sees it, right? Loves it. Yeah. He always asked me to take his Elmo and Cookie Monster down that's up there so he can play with it. And he, he, they know, without knowing, they know that it's theirs. Yeah. And they feel like my mom cares about me. My mom loves me. Yeah. So you always, I'll raise him till however old displaying his artwork. <laughs> Hopefully he watches this video in like 20 One years. Day. He goes, my mom. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay, so any last last uh last words for our moms out there or our our prospective moms out there? Do we have hey. any um, moms no. expecting or those trying? If anyway. you ever have any questions, if you ever need anything, I'm there. I'm on Instagram at the naked mama. And yeah, I love hearing from um everyone so and, and no so, questions off the table <laughs> so we you don't only deal with um human moms doggy moms as well sure i could try <laughs> <laughs> i love dogs so okay well thank you christina thank you for your thank you I really appreciate you and I, I really appreciate you giving some information to moms out there oh my gosh anytime okay talk to you soon hopefully we'll do this next week okay thank you bye